from Alexander and Mr. Kapika. Mr. Speaker, I rise for a point of personal privilege. The gentleman has the floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. For the last few weeks, we've heard a lot about health care access in Virginia. We've heard arguments about the cost of expanding Medicaid and the effect it will have on business and the economy. We've heard about Virginia taxpayers sending $5 million a day to other states. We've heard about recent studies that show how increased coverage would have a significant and positive impact on our economy. We've also heard calls to wait. We've heard efforts to deny or obscure the evidence that the State Chamber of Commerce, our hospitals, independent auditors, and experts all agree with. And I expect this debate will continue. All of us in this chamber are fortunate enough to have access to health care. And therefore, we have the luxury to debate whether or not expanding access to health care will really bring in 30,000 new jobs, or if it will really reduce private employer and individual health care costs by over $250 million over the next five years, or if our hospitals really are in dire financial need, or just partial dire financial need. But we can't forget that for hundreds of thousands of Virginians, this is not a numbers game. This is their life. Delegate Plum spoke about this the other day. For many people, this is an everyday kitchen table issue. Like Allison Carden, a working 37-year-old mother of three in Giles County. She lost her job in the recession and then lost her health insurance when she got divorced. Later, as a waitress at a pizza restaurant, she had to choose between spending $300 a month for her seizure medicine or feeding her kids. As I suspect many parents would, Allison chose to take care of her kids. And then one day she had a seizure while driving. Realizing that she could kill herself or others, lose her job, put her family at risk, she sought out a prescription assistance program to pay for what is now $700 a month in medicine. Some in this chamber have talked about the patchwork of services available in Virginia, arguing that these services meet the needs of the uninsured. While we are fortunate they exist, they are just a patchwork. The services don't come close to meeting what the folks in this chamber would call normal health care. Allison still needs insurance and has to worry every day about what she and her three children will do if something serious happens to her, forcing her into bankruptcy or worse. Thomasine Wilson worked in Richmond for 15 years as a home care provider, taking care of older adults with intellectual disabilities. Home care providers serve some of our most vulnerable citizens. They work long hours doing challenging jobs, and in return, they make barely enough to get by with no health insurance or paid sick days. So for 15 years, Thomasine went without insurance. Last year, she left that job to find something that offered insurance. During her first checkup at the doctor, the doctor discovered that Thomasine had cancer. It was in the early stages, and they were able to successfully treat it. But it is unacceptable that those who live their lives in the service of others have to put their own health at risk in Virginia. Allison and Thomasine are not unique. As we debate the question of whether this body is capable of doing the hard work needed to give all Virginians the confidence and dignity of basic health care, we must remember that our citizens are not abstract figures on a spreadsheet. Some of my friends in this chamber worry the numbers regarding cost savings and increased jobs are unreliable, and we need to allow more time for the numbers to settle. But there are people who need health care now and can't afford to wait a few years to see where the numbers settle. Every time we do Virginia's budget, we make a lot of assumptions about the economy. And as we've heard recently, we don't always get them right, and we have to adjust as we go. If we took the same attitude with numbers and assumptions with our budget as some are with this health care debate, we would never pass a budget. There would always be a reason to ask for a delay until we got a little bit more information so that we can make sure our numbers were a little bit more solid. We have been reforming and improving Medicaid for years. As mentioned during this debate, the system has also grown as we added care for young children and others. We have already proven that we are capable of expanding access to care and reforming at the same time. We've done it, and we should continue to do it. You know, Allison and Thomasine don't really care if this body likes the president or not. They don't care about our politics. They and many others like them just want to work hard and enjoy the dignity and security of basic health care. Virginia taxpayers are losing millions of dollars every day to support the uninsured in other states. We are risking about $3.9 billion in positive benefits to our economy at a time when we know our economy is weak. We are denying much needed care to our citizens. So as we continue with this debate, let's focus on ensuring everybody in our state has a chance to work hard and live a healthy life. 
let's focus, especially now with our new economic numbers, let's focus on bringing our tax dollars home and growing jobs in our state. Let's focus on doing the hard work I know we are capable of in finding a Virginia way to support hardworking Virginians. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.